Hey guys, Mark Boswell here, Boswell Emergency Medical Education, coming at you with a CEN question and answer video discussion. And this will be on the most recent practice question I posted. Um, got a lot of wrong answers right off the bat. Um, I understand, again, what you guys are thinking, but I'm trying to put you guys, especially most of the people that follow this page, are looking to take their CEN exam, and I've also got some medic students taking their national registry. So. The point of this question was really to get you thinking on how to take a professional exam. And, you know, that's hard sometimes. We have to sort out what you might do in your real life, your real clinical practice versus on the exam. Remember, there's always that one best answer means one is more right. Yes, that is true. One is more right than the others. But, you know, really, um, and when I get into it here in just a second, what you'll see is it's really not different from what we do clinically day in and day out is just in a testing exam scenario, you have to be able to spell out the scenario and you have to be able to pick one thing that's the best answer. You have to realize that in the exam, it doesn't take into the uh, into consideration the nuances of how we do our job. You know, we do, a, especially if you've got any, any, experience, any experience at all, we do a lot of stuff kind of like by that sixth sense we've developed over years. You know, does the patient look sick or do they look well? things like that. But there are some basics, and so let's talk about the question in particular. The question was, a uh, patient signs into triage with a complaint of shortness of breath. What is the first thing you assess for, or the first thing you want to look at, etc.? And I gave you some choices. I think the first one was uh, A, uh, assess, uh, listen for uh, stridorous sounds in the airway. B was look for the work of breathing and the color of the skin. C was something about maybe checking a pulse or whatnot. And I think D was checking their mental status. And you know, I'm gonna tell you, the right answer is A, to listen to listen for stridorous sounds from the airway. And and a lot of people went with uh, B, the work of breathing, a few people went with D, a few people did pick A. I get what they're saying, but here's the thing. Even if you don't specifically stop and assess your patient for strider in the airway, you do it automatically when they come in, when you first meet with them. Um, a lot of this stuff is done by visual. You can tell if their airway is patent. The reason this answer is the right answer, because these exams follow the same primary and secondary assessments, which is you always assess the airway, then the breathing, then the circulation, and then the disability. So in actuality, these answers were actually set up in the correct order, A, B, C and D. Um, yeah, and I know it's, it's a no-brainer because most people are like, well, I would know if they're having strider, I would hear it. Well, yeah, you would. But the fact is, you have to address that first. If there is strider going on, before you even see your patient, let's say they're around the corner and you can't see them, but you hear strider or you hear that kid with that croupy sounding cough, which sometimes can be striderous, you don't know what you got other than what you hear. And it is an airway problem, and the airway trumps everything. Okay, for this exam. So again, this the key to this one was just following the priorities of care, the priorities of your primary and secondary assessment. Prior, primary assessment is always airway first, breathing, circulation, then disability. Okay, um, and it, again, it's hard. It's hard. Remember, if you're taking this as a professional exam, I want you to always answer these questions this way. I realize that in your work dynamic, a lot of times you're processing these things maybe even simultaneously. And I get that. We do that. Skilled clinicians do that. It's, that's part of it why it's an art and a skill set that we learn as we go through this business of emergency medicine. So the correct answer is A, to listen for striders, airway sounds, because if there is strider in the airway, that does make it an emergency that you need to assess further um, or possibly intervene for. And you always answer these questions in the uh, in the order of assessment before intervention I'm sorry assessment and then planning and then intervention and then reevaluation and under assessment it's always your primary survey a first B C D so you don't do any inter if any interventions until you've done that primary assessment unless your primary assessment revealed an emergency life threat an emergency life threat, and in which case you stop immediately and deal with that. So if this patient uh, was striderous, had a near airway obstruction, that's the priority. You deal with that before you go any further, okay? I hope this helps. I had to rewrite it a little bit because I wanted to make sure I was trying to, to pull out of you um, the particular bit of knowledge to help with this. So remember the take home here, always look for those assessments, the priority of A, B, C, D. 
Always do your assessments before your interventions. I hope this helps. Feel free to shoot me any comments down below. I think I commented to the individuals who got it right. I kind of challenged them a bit further as far as what the actual best rationale was, and that's the best rationale because airway assessment always precedes breathing, circulation, or disability assessment. Okay? All right. Good luck to you guys. Uh, like, comment, share. Uh, share this page with your friends, your other nurse or medic friends who might be studying um, or just want to beef up some of their knowledge and keep up to par with things. Um, I, lo I love y'all's comments and the feedback. Y'all be safe out there. Take care.